celebrating him as eternal flame of inspiration. And we read the uh, first part of uh, Hinge on Practical Spirituality. And today we'll uh, take it further. And I welcome Gita Ji. Thank you for Let's joining go. me. Thank you. Let's talk about um, something uh, which you have <laughs> felt yourself practicing yoga or pranayam. How uh, it changes your perception? Well, in the very simplest form, it calms me. It uh, brings me back to the reality, to now, the present moment, and feels good at the same time. Yeah, I'm taking care of my physical self. My, For me, it's the three things that I have to concentrate upon, that I have to fix and keep it aligned. It's physical, mental, and spiritual. All three, to me, go hand in hand. One goes down, the other two start to figure. So that alignment has to be there. It's like I see that line of chakras, and when they are aligned, it is beautiful. Beautiful. That's how I feel about yoga. So satsang also helps in uh, having that clarity, conviction, and commitment uh, yeah. to uh, to have proper alignment. And for proper alignment, uh, when we read Swami Gandhi's uh, words, that also helps. It is like it's a boost of brightness <laughs> that Absolutely. you get. Absolutely. And we are and, reading hints on practical spirituality today, uh, the second part from where we left. Um, Gita, I would request you to continue. And um, sure. I'll, I'll just mention one more thing that uh, these days I often hear that I am a spiritual person, but I'm not religious. Now, what is the take of Swami Yukana? Probably we'll get something uh, in the following words as we proceed. Yeah, please continue. Sure. According to the yogis, there are three principles, nerve currents. One, they call the Ida, the other, the Pingala, and the middle one is Susushmana. And all these are inside the spinal column. The Ida and the Pingala, the left and the right, are clusters of nerves, while the middle one, the Susushmana, is hollow and is not a cluster of nerves. This Susushmana is closed, and for the ordinary man, is of no use, for he works through the Ida and Pingala only. Currents are cur continually going down and coming up through these nerves, carrying orders all over the body through other nerves, running to different organs of the body. Hmm. Uh, please continue. It is the regulation and the bringing into rhythm of Ida and Pingala that is a great object of breathing. But that itself is nothing. It is only so much air taken into the lungs except for purifying the blood. It is no more use. There is nothing occult in the air that we take in with our breath and assimilate to purify the blood. The action is merely a motion. This motion can be reduced to the unit movement we call prana. And everywhere, all movements are the various manifestations of this prana. This prana is electricity. It is magnetism. It is thrown out by the brain as thought. Everything is prana. It is moving. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Oh, how beautiful. Very, very um, aptly explained very. by Swami Vivekananda so, oh. so many years ago. And of course, uh, he draws from uh, scriptures. And uh, he later on, somewhere talks about Sage Patanjali also. But the Ida, Pingla, and Sushumna, and the importance of Sushumna, in such simple words as he explained. And while uh, he says uh, that everything is prana, it is moving the sun, the moon, and the stars. Uh, there is also this expression, this, this prana is electricity. It is magnetism. And so, I think that the pranayam is a very beautiful thing. Thanks to some latest uh, sages from India, including Swami uh, Ramdev Ji, Baba Ramdev Ji, Sadhguru Ji, Shri Shri Ravi Shankar Ji, they all have to pay attention to the pain of the pain. How did they come to the Santulan? They are giving the sense of the pain. I find it, and also I find it very, the simplest way of keeping yourself 
intact and aligned that's what i have found so agar mere ko koi aisa aata hai ki i don't want to exercise i don't want to do these things so i just say just do the pranayama at least do that start with that and you see the results and then you get into the things so he's talking about pranayam uh, and i continue reading uh, yes right. please do the breathing exercises called pranayam bring about regulation of the breathing rhythmic action of the prana when the prana is working rhythmically everything works properly when the yogis get control over their own bodies if there is any disease in any part they know that the prana is not rhythmic there and hmm. they direct the prana to be affected part until the rhythm is reestablished just as you can control the prana in your own body so if you are powerful enough you can control even from here another man's prana in india oh. this lecture was delivered in california uh, it is all one there is one break unity is the law there is no break unity is the law physically psychically mentally morally metaphysically it is all one life is only a vibration that which vibrates this ocean of ether vibrates you just as in a lake various strata of ice of various degrees of solidity are formed or as in an ocean of vapor there are various degrees of density so is this universe an ocean of matter this is an ocean of ether in which we find the sun moon stars and ourselves in different state of solidity but the continuity is not broken hmm it is uh, the same throughout beautiful 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 this uh, is so nice how how much um, <laughs> clarity he had uh, at that time and i think uh, i i was also reminded of deepak chopra's book ageless uh, body timeless mind or yes ageless something like that and and many and so the many many people have spoken about it uh, and some people have actually taken credit for the things which have already always existed <laughs> uh, this is but, like you know renewed form like we take it forward the teachings are always from the sages which are carried forward so but it is so uplifting when you read that uh, uh, there is a sense of oneness and uh, absolutely everything absolutely. there is a one continuity uh, so one vibration which is going through everything ek bahav jise hum keh sakte hain bilkul aur ek connection jise hum keh sakte hain ki surya chandra hamara dhar hai sabka sabka it is so very well explained to chaliye aage chalte hain now when we study metaphysics we come to know the world is one not that the spiritual the material the mental and the world of energies are separate it is all one but seen from different planes of vision when you think of yourself as a body you forget that you are a mind and when you think yourself as a mind you will forget the body there is only one thing that you are you can see it either as a matter of body or you can see it as a mind or spirit birth life and death are but all superstitions none was ever born none will ever die one changes one's position that's all i'm sorry to see in the west how much they make of death always trying to catch a little life give us life after death give us life they are so happy if anybody tells them that they are going to live afterwards how can i ever doubt such a thing how can i imagine that i am dead try to think of yourself as dead and you will see that you are present to see your own dead body life is such a wonderful reality that you cannot for a moment forget it you may as well doubt that you exist this is the first fact in consciousness i am who can imagine a state of things which never existed it is the most self evident of all the truths so the idea of immorality is inherent in man how can one discuss a subject that is unimaginable why should we want to discuss the pros and cons of a subject that is self evident 
<laughs> my God, we are really getting in there. So really getting you, in there. You, you feel like goosebump when... Oh, uh, my God. Uh, truly, truly. Because we consider also the body is, of course, um, uh, experience of most of us. And um, even when we hear that we never die, we don't buy that. And uh, we, uh, even though he says that uh, reference of immortality uh, and it is self-evident, uh, we don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't really buy it. But what he's saying here, so the idea of immortality is inherent in man, uh, makes me say that uh, we have Swami Vivekananda with us, and in fact, he's actually alive through his words. Absolutely. He's probably more alive than many people who are walking and talking. <laughs> you are so right. You are yeah. so right. It's like, and he also says, it's like changing the position. It is not gone. Nothing is gone. Everything is there. But it's also the perception also, you know, how we perceive the things right. that makes us feel that way. So, so he is helping us refine our permission uh, perception. And uh, happy birthday to Swami Vivekananda because we started this series on his birthday. So please continue. Or was it you were reading or I was no, reading? You, it's the whole universe. Oh, so it's my turn. See, I forgot it was you who were reading. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. The whole universe, uh, therefore, is a unit. From whatever standpoint you view it, just now, to us, this universe is a unit of prana and akash, hmm. force and matter. And mind you, like all other basic principles, this is also self-contradictory. For what is force? That which moves matter. And what is matter? That which is moved by force. Wow. It is a seesaw. Some of the fundamentals of our reasoning are most curious. In spite of our boast of uh, science and knowledge, it is a headache without a head. <laughs> <laughs> As the Sanskrit proverb says, it is a headache without a head. Uh, this state of things has been called Maya. Mm. It has neither existence nor non-existence. You cannot call it existence because that only exists, which is beyond time and space, which is self-existence. Yet this world satisfies to a certain degree or ideal of existence. Therefore, it has an apparent existence. But there is uh, the real existence in and through everything. And that reality, as it were, it is caught in the meshes of time, space, and causation. There is the real man, the infinite, the beginningless, the endless, the ever-blessed, the ever-free. He has been caught in the meshes of time, space, and causation. So has everything in this world. The reality of everything is the same infinite. This is not idealism. It is not that the world does not exist. It has a relative existence and fulfills all its requirements. But it has no independent existence. It exists because of the absolute reality beyond time, space, and causation. Hmm. It is a melody of eternal um, uh, kind <laughs> that... You uh, hear yes. through Swami Vivekananda's words. This is like you have to go through it two, three times to actually get in there. Absolutely. That's how I feel. So it's, I'll con I'll continue. Uh, yeah, you before you continue, I'll just make a poetic kind of uh, sure uh, comment, and that is uh, when you listen to him, he he lifts your level of consciousness in such a way as if uh, us. A, a, a toddler or a child is uh, being lifted uh, by his mother and then uh, when it is lifted it kind of uh, it, it is um, having a, a, a laughter uh, uh, which is uh, liberating laughter and laughter full of pure joy so when you are in the flow of the expression of uh, consciousness of such elevated beings, you feel so much uplifted. And especially in uh, hints on practical spirituality also, you get uh, that kind of a feeling. You know, so many times I just feel speechless. I just have no words for some time. I'm totally spellbound. Absolutely. This is how I feel in between, even while reading it. 
Yeah. So please continue for um, yes. next three, four, three para at least. I made long digressions. Now let's turn to our main subject. All the automatic movements and all the conscious movements are the working of prana through the nerves. Now, you see, it'll be a very good thing to have control over the unconscious actions. On some other occasions, I told you the definition of God and man. Man is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere, but the center is located in one spot. And God is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere, but whose center is everywhere. He works through all hands, sees all through all eyes, walks on all feet, breathes through all bodies, lives in all life speaks through every mouth and thinks through every brain. Man can become like God and acquire control over the whole universe if he multiplies infinitely his center of self-consciousness. Consciousness, therefore, is the chief thing to understand. Let us say that here is an infinite like amid darkness. We don't see the line, but on it there is one luminous point which moves on. As it moves along the line, it lights up its different parts in succession, and all that is left behind becomes dark again. Our consciousness may well be likened to this luminous point. Its past experiences have been replaced by the present or have been subconscious. We are not aware of their precedence to us, but there they are unconsciously influence Ankar, our body and our mind. Every movement that is now being made without the help of consciousness was previously, previously conscious. Sufficient impetus have been given to it to work of itself. Sufficient impetus has been given to it to work on itself. Huh. And uh, these are again uh, such expressions which require the intense concentration to absolutely absorb properly. To absorb also, you know, every, yeah. especially the consciousness. And, yeah. then and, and these are very often quoted lines of Swami Vikana where he has said, uh, and you just read, man is an infinite circle yeah. whose circumference is nowhere. Now try to imagine what is he saying here. Man is an infinite circle. Infinite circle. Man is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere. Now, whose circumference is nowhere, infinite circle. It's even uh, it kind of um, acts uh, as uh, something which expands your imagination also. Yes. Uh, listen to this again, Gita. Man is an infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere, but the center is located in one spot. So this one spot, every man is the spot in which the center of this infinite circle whose circumference is nowhere is located. And then look at the contrast, how he explains what God is. God. And God is an infinite circle. So up to this is common. Man is also infinite circle. And God is also infinite circle. The difference is uh, in case of man whose circumference is nowhere but the center is located in one spot. In the case of God whose circumference is nowhere, up to this also is common. But here in case of God whose center is everywhere. So that is the difference between man and That's God. So so this way... Uh, the How way you explain? Has, has explained. Yep. I mean, this is amazing. This is amazing. Even to be able to conceive of uh, this sort yeah. of a uh, way to explain the difference between man and God. Uh, and also the similarity between man and God. That's so this true. is infinite circle whose uh, circumference is nowhere. Circumference ko Hindi mein vyas kehte hain. Vyas. Acha. Matlab wo uska jo diameter hota diameter is circumference I think. Uh, That's why he is saying, uske baad, man can become like God and acquire control over the whole universe if he multiplies infinitely his center of self-consciousness. Hmm. selflessness importance hai, yeah. ye ki apne ko restricted raho, itna sa hi raho, to itna sa hi And then you grow. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Actually, growth and expansion and uh, 
detachment are parallel in different ways uh, like you have your akash ganga apna jo milky uh-huh. way kya hai so that is a continuous expansion and somewhere swami vivekananda also said expansion is life contraction is death yes so this is this is also his his words so we'll we'll continue a uh, mm-hmm. little bit um, the great error the great error in all ethical systems without exception has been the failure of teaching the means by which men could refrain from doing evil <laughs> what a way to put it yep. all these systems of ethics teach do not steal very good but why does a man steal because all stealing robbing and other evil actions as a rule have become automatic <laughs> the systematic robber thief liar unjust man and women are all these in spite of themselves it is really a tremendous psychological problem we should look upon man in the most charitable light it is not so easy to be good who is saying this song we can i saying it is not so easy to be good what are you but mere machines until you are free wow. should you be proud because you are good certainly not you are good because you can't help it another is bad because he can't help it if you were in his position who knows what you would have been hmm. the woman in the street on the or the thief in the jail is the christ that is being sacrificed that you may be a good man such is the law of balance all the thieves and the murderers all the unjust the weakest the wickedest the devils they are all my christ wow oh a worship to the god christ and to the demon christ that is my doctrine i can't help it my salutation goes to the feet of the good the saintly and to the feet of the wicked and the devilish they are all my teachers hmm. all are my spiritual fathers all are my saviors i may curse one and yet benefit by his failings i may bless another and benefit by his good deeds this is as true as that i stand here i have no sneer at the women walking in the street because society wants it she my savior she who street walking is the cause of the chastity of other women think hmm. of that think man and women of this question in your mind it is a truth a bare bold truth as i see more of the world see more of men and women this conviction grows stronger whom shall i blame whom shall i praise both sides of the shield must be seen wow so this is nobility <laughs> this is in the true sense of the word i would say nobility to be able to have that vision actually jis tarah swami vikan ne bataya to आपको कहीं ना कहीं लगता है कि किसी को आप बुरा मानते हैं जजमेंट के साथ में कि ये इसने इतना गंदा काम किया उसके प्रति भी जो आपके अंदर का भाव है उसमें एक पावनता आए और उसके अंदर की अच्छाई देखने की क्षमता जाग जाए ये विवेकानंद के शब्दों का कमाल है इट इज अमेजिंग इट इज अमेजिंग और जो वो एक्सप्रेशन ले रहे हैं कि विमेन ऑन द स्ट्रीट और और नोबिलिटी ऑफ विमेन तो वो uh, किस तरह से विवशता के कारण कोई क्या पथ अपना लेता है उसको लेके हम उसके बारे में बुरा ही बुरा नहीं एंड आई थिंक उन्होंने ये बहुत अच्छे से कहा कि अगर आप अच्छे हो तो इस पर घमंड करोगे क्या कि मैं अच्छा हूँ हाँ ये भी मैंने बहुत बहुत मुझे अच्छा लगा ये भी बिकॉज इट ऑफन इज वी स्टार्ट फीलिंग सो गुड अबाउट और बींग गुड in any way unka kehna na to acha hone pe gaman karo na kisi ko bura hone pe usko bura de bura dekho to very tall order but hmm. it is so, definitely something to think of to ek wo hai na kaha kaha gaya hai ki bura jo dekhan main chala bura na mil gaya to aur jo mukh dekha apna bura na sach mein sach mein hmm. only if you realize it hmm. so kahan par jana hai abhi hame <laughs> अब हमें आगे जाने <laughs> तो अपने ऑटोमेटिक विदर्स दीड इज नो डाउट ऑन दस प्लेन 
but the cause which produced the evil deed was far beyond in the realms of the unconscious, unseen, and therefore more potent. Mm. Practical psychology directs, first of all, its energies in controlling the unconscious. And we know that we can do it. Why? Because we know the cause of the unconscious is the conscious. The unconscious thoughts are the submerged millions of our old conscious thoughts. Old conscious actions become per petrified. We do not look at them, do not know them, have forgotten them. But mind you, if the power of evil is in the unconscious, so also is the power of good. We have many things stored in us as in a pocket. We have forgotten them. Do not even think of them. And there are many of them rotting, becoming positively dangerous. They come forth. The unconscious causes which kill humanity. Hmm. True psychology would therefore try to bring them under the control of the unconscious. The great task is to revive the whole man as it were in order to make him the complete master of himself. Even what we call the automatic action of the organs within our bodies, such as the liver, etc., can be made to obey our commands. Wow. And so what he's saying, we can self-heal ourselves, and that also is being practiced. And that uh, the term placebo effect, etc., somewhere right. uh, also. I'll read a little bit more. Uh, this is the first part of the study, the control of the unconscious. The next is to go beyond the conscious, just as unconscious work is bent consciousness. So there's another work which is above consciousness. When the superconscious state is reached, man becomes free, becomes free and divine. Hmm. That becomes immortality. Weakness becomes infinite power. And the iron bondage becomes liberty. That is the goal. The infinite realm of the superconscious. So therefore, we see now that there must be a twofold work. First, by the proper working of the Ida and Pingla which are the two existing ordinary currents to control the subconscious actions. And secondly, to go beyond even consciousness. consciousness. Ah, this is really so many things in there he has touched upon. Very, very nice. Absolutely. Uh, so, mm, तो इस इसको आप वापस सुनते पढ़ते हैं तब थोड़ा थोड़ा क्लियर होता है वो कॉन्शियसनेस की भी बात करते हैं सब कॉन्शियस की भी बात कर रहे हैं सुपर कॉन्शियस की भी बात कर रहे हैं और कैसे जो कॉन्शियस थॉट्स हैं वो हमारे सब कॉन्शियस में स्टोर्ड रहते हैं तो अच्छे हों या बुरे हों वो बाद में वापस आते हैं और सब कॉन्शियस को कंट्रोल करने के लिए कॉन्शियस को कंट्रोल करना है तो प्राण और ये सब बातें हैं तो मेरे ख्याल से कंक्लूडिंग जो कुछ पंक्तियां इस हिंस ऑन प्रैक्टिकल स्पिरिचुअलिटी की हैं एक्चुअली ही ही इज टॉकिंग इन अ यूनिवर्सल फैशन यस रेफरेंस टू हिंदुइज्म क्रिश्चियनिटी वगैरह के हैं दे आल्सो आर काइंड ऑफ गिवन अप एज वी प्रोसीड विद हिम एंड दिस इज अ फ्लाइट वेयर एवरीबॉडी इज वेलकम दिस इज फॉर द ह्यूमैनिटी दिस इज नॉट बाउंड बाय एनी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड नैरोली डिफाइंड group of people or identity this is this is for all that's the feeling you get correct absolutely when we are talking about the consciousness we are talking about the prana it is for everyone it is for everyone mm -hmm. and to think that it is just for one sec is i would say ignorance so let's move towards so, knowledge hmm. the book yes The books say that he alone is a yogi who after long practice in self-concentration has attained to this truth. The Susushmana now opens and a current which never before entered into the new passage will find its way into it and gradually ascend to what we call in figurative language, the different lotus centers till at last it reaches the brain. Then the yogi becomes conscious of what he really is. God himself. Everyone without exception, every one of us can it attain to this culmination of yoga, but it's a terrible task. If a person wants to attain to the truth, 
he will have to do something more than to listen to lectures that take a few breathing exercises. Everything lies in its preparation. How long does it take to strike a light? Only a second. But how long it takes to make a candle? How long does it take to eat a dinner? Perhaps half an hour, but hours to prepare the food. We want to strike the light in a second, but we forget that the making of the candle is the chief thing. Beautiful. So though it is so hard to reach the goal, yet even our smallest attempts are not in vain. We know that nothing is lost. In the Gita, Arjuna asks Krishna, those who fail in attaining perfection in yoga and this life, are they destroyed like the clouds of summer? Krishna replies, nothing, my friend, is lost in this world. Whatever one does, that remains as one's own. And if the fruition of yoga does not come in this life, one takes it up again in the next birth. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how do you explain the marvelous childhood of Jesus, Buddha and Shankara? We'll go further. Yeah. Breathing, posturing, etc. are no doubt helps in yoga, but they are merely physical. The great preparation are mental. The first thing necessary is quiet and peaceful life, peaceable life. If you want to be a yogi, you must be free and place yourself in circumstances where you are alone and free from all anxiety. He who desires a comfortable and nice life and at the same time wants to realize the self is like a fool who wanting to cross the river caught hold of the crocodile, mistaking it for a log of wood. Seek here first the kingdom of God and everything shall be added to you. This is the only great duty. This is the renunciation. Live for an ideal, ideal and leave no place in mind for anything else. Let us put forth all our energies to acquire that, which never fails, our spiritual perfection. If we have true yearning for realization, we must struggle. And through struggle, growth will come. We shall make mistakes, but they may be angels, unawares. Hmm. So the last paragraph of uh, this um, hinges on practical spirituality and uh, what you just read, Gita Ji, uh, he, he clarifies uh, uh, and gives a very interesting comparison. Um, if uh, we want to lead a comfortable life and we are uh, not ready to work for uh, the ideal, uh, then it is like... Um, a uh, fool who wanting to cross the river caught mm -hmm. hold of a crocodile, mistaking it for a log of wood. So, I will read the last paragraphs of uh, this uh, lecture. Zero. It is help to spiritual life is meditation, dhyana. In meditation, we divest ourselves of all material conditions and feel our divine nature. We do not depend upon any external help in meditation. The touch of the soul can paint the brightest color even in the dingiest places. Hmm. It can cast a fragrance over the villiest thing. It can make the wicked divine and all enmity, all selfishness is effaced. The less the thought of the body, the better. For it is the body that drags us down. It is attachment, identification, which makes us miserable. That is the secret. To think that I am the spirit and not the body and that the whole of this universe with all its relations, with all its goods and all its evil is but a sense, a series of paintings. Hmm, beautiful. Scenes on a canvas of which I am a witness. Oh, how beautiful. How Talia, Swami Vivekananda, <laughs> Talia. Amazing. Wow. This is really to be read, to be heard, again, again. To, yes, to get the so sense what of will, So what I'll say is um, we rediscovered that Swamiji is alive because the way he mentioned immortality makes us um, not just think, but be convinced that uh, he's not gone. <laughs> it's amazing how you, know, you feel the presence of the person talking, of his saintliness talking directly to us. This is how it's visioned. 
absolutely absolutely it's beautiful and so this is the place uh, kanyakumari vivekanand smarak uh, where he uh, as we read uh, meditated for three complete uh, days and night uh, on bharat mata and uh, those days i think he had to swim across to the spot wow. where currently this is so Hmm. He was a very strong uh, person in all uh, aspects, physically also. <laughs> Even and if I... I'm seeing his picture right behind you yeah. as a background, it is so majestic, and it's That's so right. full of confidence and positivity. It's amazing. Hmm. So we'll we'll continue this series by Swamiji's blessings, and uh, I sincerely thank you, Gita Ji, for uh, joining. बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया आपका तो आप अगर देख रहे धन्यवाद